Hello, welcome to Eureka Zone. My name is Lenny Shaughnessy, and this is the first of many episodes introducing you to your new Eureka Zone accessories. Now, in this episode, we're going to discuss the installation of the Eureka Zone Smart Saw Base onto your skill saw. Now, the Smart Saw Base is made to fit most 7 quarter inch skill saws. So, with that being said, let's take a look at what comes in your package when it arrives at your door. Depending on the model that you purchase, you're either going to receive the original smart saw base or the current smart saw base. Now both saw bases come with the same safety features and accessories, while the original saw base is made for right blade skill saws only, and the current saw base is made for both right and left blade skill saws. In this episode, we're going to cover the current smart saw base and accessories to which you should have received two on-track anti-chip inserts one off-track anti-chip insert, one two-part fin assembly and the associated hardware. You're also going to receive a set of assembly instructions that will walk you through the process of installing the smart saw base onto your skill saw. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the inserts and we're going to set them aside for a moment. We'll get to those in just a minute, but right now I want to focus on the installation of the smart saw base onto your skill saw. Now, as I stated earlier, our current smart saw base is designed for both left and right blade skill saws. Now installing the smart saw base onto your skill saw is pretty straightforward and you're only going to need a couple of items that you'll have around your home or shop. Some of the items are a drill, a 5-32 inch drill bit, either a tape measure or a set of calipers if you happen to have some, and some double sided tape. Now the double sided tape is going to aid in the installation of the smart saw base but it's not absolutely required. The calipers or the tape measure are just going to help at the end, kind of make sure that you're aligned properly and you can use either of the two. Alright, before we get started on installing the smart saw base onto your skill saw, let's take a close look at the saw base itself and let me tell you about some of the features that are going to aid in the installation. Now with your package that you received, you're going to receive a bag of hardware. Now within this bag of hardware, you're going to notice a small insert. This is our anti-kickback fin and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Now, with the anti-kickback fin set aside, the remaining hardware are your installation screws. You should receive four 8-32nd by 3 quarter inch screws, four 8-32nd by half inch screws, and four locking nuts. The design features of the smart saw base provide for easy installation, and these features are the identifying marks for left or right blade skill saws. Now depending on whether or not you have a left or a right blade skill saw depends on how the saw base will be turned during installation. For instance, we're going to be using a right handed skill saw in this installation video and for that I want to make sure that the R on my saw base is facing forward. Another feature of the smart saw base are the four alignment tabs that aid with the installation. Now these alignment tabs will be used to align the smart saw base with the back of your saw blade. And the final feature of the smart saw base are the pre-drilled holes. Now these holes were drilled so that the smart saw base will fit on a variety of skill saws. Now depending on your particular model, you will only use four of the pre-drilled holes. There's no need to use them all. Alright, the first step in installing the smart saw base onto your skill saw, we need to go ahead and raise the blade to its highest position. Once it's raised up, go ahead and lock it in that position so it stays. And now take your blade guard and retract it to its furthest position and either take a small C-clamp or a small clamp and lock that blade guard so it doesn't close on you. Now from there we can go ahead and turn the saw over and get ready to install the smart base. Now earlier in the video I mentioned how double sided tape will aid in the installation and this is where it comes into play. We're going to go ahead and tear off two strips that are about the same length as your saw base. And from there, you want to go ahead and put one strip, any position is fine, right along the bottom of your saw base. And take another strip and right along the top edge of your saw base, go ahead and add it there. Alright, once you have the double sided tape installed, don't peel off the back side of it just yet. First, we want to go ahead and take the base and lower it all the way down so that the blade is protruding above the bottom of the base. Now with that, go ahead and reposition your saw so it's not rocking on you. And take a look at your smart saw base now. 
the smart saw base is marked, as I said earlier, with a left and right identifying mark depending on your skill saw. Now in this video I'm using a right bladed skill saw so I want to make sure that the R on my smart base is facing the front of the saw. Now once I know that it is I can go ahead and set it into place and if the spring clamp you're using to hold your blade guard is in the way go ahead and reposition it but make sure that the blade guard doesn't spring back on you. With that, go ahead and position the saw base so that at least two of the four alignment tabs are touching the back of the blade. Now something that you should know about the alignment tabs, the alignment tabs from the inside of this inner track here, from the inside of this inner track to the end of the alignment tab is exactly three inches. Now that is a magic number because this base is made to be used freehand or right on our track and it has to be three inches from the back side of your blade. So make sure that those two tabs are touching exactly on the back side of your blade. Now once you have the smart saw base positioned to where at least two of the four alignment tabs are making contact with the back side of the blade, go ahead and identify four of the pre-drilled holes that you're going to use for your installation. Now on a rare occasion, depending on the model saw that you have, some of the holes may not line up with your base. If that's the case, the great thing about the smart saw base is you can pre-drill your own holes that fit your saw base. So I've got four perfect holes here for this particular saw that I can go ahead and mark and I'm going to use my drill bit, the 530 seconds drill bit that I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use that to mark my holes. From here we can go ahead and remove the smart saw base and at this point, we can peel off the double-sided tape and get ready to reinstall. Now, if you chose not to use double-sided tape to aid in your installation, what you want to do is when you have the smart saw base in position and you've marked your holes, go ahead and take a couple of clamps to clamp the base to your saw. From there, you can go ahead and begin drilling those holes out. Now, in my case, I went ahead and used the double-sided tape for installation, so I'm going to go ahead and peel off the paper. Now that I have the smart saw base secured firmly with the double-sided tape, I'm ready to go ahead and start drilling the holes. One thing I do want to mention to you, when you are installing our smart saw base onto your saw and you're aligning everything, make sure that the front of your saw base is at the forward most position of our smart saw base. Once you're set, Go ahead and start drilling. Alright, once you've drilled the four holes required to install the smart saw base, you're going to look at your hardware pack. Now we've provided you with two different size sets of screws. You're going to have four 832 by 3 quarter inch screws and four 832 by half inch screws. Now depending on where you're installing the screws on your saw depends on the length that you're going to use. Now on my particular installation, I've got an area over here where I'm going to be using the 3 quarter inch 832's. And I've got an area on this side here where I'm going to be using the 832 by half inch. Now when it comes to installing the screws, depending on your saw base, in most cases the screws will actually tap themselves during the installation. Now if you're not sure whether or not your saw base will self tap in that hole, you can use an 832 tap and go ahead and pre tap before installing the hardware. Alright on this particular saw base as I install the screws they'll tap themselves. Alright with the screws in the installation is pretty much complete. Now the one thing I do want to mention to you is that in your hardware pack you're going to have four nuts. Now depending on the style of your saw base, uh, you may want to use these nuts on the back side of the screw just for some extra security. Or you may be required to use them depending on if your base taps well enough or not. Now in my case, my four screws tap well and my saw base is installed. The next step, the alignment tabs no longer need to be there so they simply just snap off. Just a quick wiggle and they'll come right off. 
All right, with the alignment tabs removed, we wanna go ahead and take this saw base and raise it up to its highest position and get it locked down. Now we're almost ready to make the first cut with the new smart saw base attached to the skill saw. But first, I wanna to talk to you about the inserts that came with your package, their uses, and how to install them. All right, as I mentioned earlier in the video, with your package, you received two on-track anti-chip inserts, one off-track anti-chip insert, and a two-part anti-kickback fin assembly. Now, with regards to the on-track anti-chip inserts, you received a left and a right insert. Now, that depends on the type of saw you're using. If you're using a right blade skill saw, then you would use the right on-track anti-chip insert. If your skill saw is a left blade skill saw, then you would use the left. Now, with regards to the inserts themselves, we're gonna talk about them more in episode two because they're for use when you're using the smart saw base on our guide rail. All right, let's take a look at the off-track anti-chip insert and its purpose. When installed in the smart base, it provides a clean, chip-free cut, the same as a zero clearance insert on a table saw. To install the insert, it goes into the front of the smart saw base. Simply slide it in until it snaps into place. Now once that's done, we're ready to go ahead and make our zero clearance curve by making our first cut. All right, with the anti-chip insert installed into the smart base, we're ready to go ahead and make that initial zero clearance curve cut. But first, we need to remove the spring clamp and allow the blade guard to retract to its full position. From there, you wanna go ahead and get yourself some scrap pieces of two by four, about too high, because we're gonna be making a plunge cut, lowering the saw to its lowest cutting depth in order to create our zero clearance curve. We need to go ahead and get the saw plugged in, make sure that our saw is up in its upright position right now and locked into place, and then we'll go ahead and lower it down as we slowly make the cut. All right, with the saw plugged in, go ahead and unlock the base lock so that the saw will be able to plunge down. Make sure that you're in a good cutting position. Once you are, make sure that saw is raised up in its full position. Pull the trigger and slowly plunge, making your cut. All right, once the cut is made, you can go ahead and raise the blade back up. And from there, you've got a nice zero clearance kerf for anti-chip cutting. So now let's go ahead and talk about the anti-kickback fin assembly, how to install it, and what it's used for. All right, once again, with the skill saw unplugged, let's talk about the two-part anti-kickback fin assembly that came with your package. Now, the anti-kickback fin is equivalent to a riving knife on your table saw. It's going to prevent kickback while you're making your cut. Now, the two-part assembly consists of your fin and your fin insert. Now, on the fin insert, there are two slots, a left slot and a right slot. Now, depending on what type of saw you have, whether it be a left blade skill saw or a right blade skill saw, that will determine what side of the fin insert your fin fits into. Now, if you notice on the fin insert itself, there's a little locking tab. That is to face the back of the smart saw base when it slides into position. So if you've got that lock facing you, then the slot to your right is the right side and the slot to the left is the left side. So I'm using a right side skill saw, a right side blade skill saw in this cut. So I wanna make sure that my fin is snapped in to the right side of my fin plate. Once I have it installed, I can go ahead and slide it into position on the smart base. Once in position, you wanna make sure that it's snap locked in and you're set. Now, the couple of things I wanna mention about this fin is the fin is designed to follow the kerf of your saw blade. So if you happen to be using a very thin kerf saw blade on your skill saw, then some modification to the fin may be required. It's very simple to do. You're gonna take a small file 
and file down the sides evenly on each side of that fin to the equivalent thickness of your skill saw blade. Now in my case, my fin is the exact thickness of my skill saw blade, so I'm ready to go ahead and make my cut with no modifications. Now with all that, I'm ready to go ahead, plug the skill saw back in, and make my first cut. Now you're going to notice something during this cut that you wouldn't normally see during a normal cutting method is you're going to notice me trying to create a kickback by jerking the saw in a back and forth position side to side. Now this is only to demonstrate how the anti-kickback fin works and prevents kickback during your cut. It's not a normal cutting method when using a skill saw. So let's go ahead and get it plugged in and we'll make our first cut. With the saw plugged in, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and lower the blade down to the thickness of the material that I'm cutting. In this example, I'm using a half inch piece of plywood. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my blade off to the side of the plywood, unlock the base, and drop it down to the cutting depth that I need. And then I'm going to go ahead and lock the base into position. Now from there, I'm ready to go ahead and make my cut. And as you notice, there was no kickback no matter how hard I tried. But let's go ahead and make a normal cut so you can see exactly how well the anti-chip insert works as well as the anti-kickback fin together. Now before I make this second cut, let me mention a couple of things about the smart base that I didn't mention throughout this episode and that is some of the features. The design of the smart base is made to be used off the rail or on the rail referring to our guide rail. Now when it's used off the rail freehand such as I'm doing now, you've got the benefit of the anti-kickback fin which is going to give you a safe cut. And then you also have the benefit of the anti-chip zero clearance insert which is going to give you that nice clean chip free cut. Now also the design of the smart base allows for use with any straight edge such as a straight piece of board that you've got clamped to your workpiece or a level or any form of straight edge. So just consider that as some of the nice features of the smart base. So let's go ahead and make this second cut and we'll wrap up this episode. Now if you notice on both sides of this plywood you've got a nice clean cut no chipping, no tear out on either side, and that's a piece to be proud of that can go in any project. All right, well that just about wraps up episode one, installing the smart base on your skill saw. Now before we close, I do want to mention something about the inserts. Your anti-chip insert, as well as your anti-kickback fin insert, those are replaceable parts, and they need to be replaced each time you replace the saw blade on your skill saw. Now you can find those replacement parts at EurekaZone.com and you'll be able to find the link to the website down in the description of this video, www.EurekaZone.com. Alright, in episode 2 we're going to cover the on-rail anti-chip inserts as well as the use of the smart base on the guide rail. Now I want to thank you for taking the time to watch the video as well as purchasing your EurekaZone product. And until episode 2, I'll see you soon.